Melanie wrecks this journal, take one. <laughs> my husband gave me this for Christmas. Okay, my desk is a mess. This is very odd for me to come to you this way, uh, all messy and whatnot, but I made a journal uh, over the last couple of days. And this is the cover. This is some of this is some flocked wallpaper that I got at that estate sale in my la in the most recent estate sale video. And then this is from the estate sale. And then these are from my sorry trim stash. This is all sorry uh, recycled sorry ribbon. So. I don't know. I, I mean, I know that y'all like to see, some of you like to see kind of the evolution of how I came to this, but I'll show you that in a second. I'm just going to sort of flip through it. So what I did in this journal was just used scraps from my, I already drew in it a little bit. I used scraps from both my scrap bin, which I keep two separate scrap bins in my cabinet here behind me. I have one that's all scrapbook paper and patterned paper. And then I have another drawer that's just paper scraps. Um, any, well, that's, that's scrapbook paper. But this one is just usually assorted scraps. There's all kinds of stuff in here. So I use papers from both of these scrap drawers because my scraps are getting kind of full again. Um, and I put this together. My thing was I was going to sew something hanging off so that there's like a tab on every single page. So I stitched something um, to the edge of, of every, almost every page. Some pages I wasn't paying attention and I somehow stitched two things to this page. But anyway, so this is just a journal, a junky journal of scraps, paper that were in my scrap bins, and then I stitched all these tabs to the pages. Um, I used journaling cards. Um, these are die cuts. There's a, a piece of sorry trim. Um, I was using a bunch of these die cut things because I have a lot of these. These are my Tim Holtz, but I have a lot of these that I've acquired over the years. Um, you can go back in the people bag. I have a lot of these things that I've acquired over the years. And, you know, like die cuts that you get, I don't know, like this, I don't know. I mean, I probably bought this stuff when my daughter was little, like uh, early 2000s, because I had this dream back then of doing a creative memories journal, not creative, yes, creative memories, yes. Anyway, you end up with a lot of these things if you buy scrapbook paper. Sometimes they come with it. And I'm not really big on some of these things, so I've just been putting them in this box of die cuts, and I thought, you know, I'm going to work my way through those. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start using those up. So that's kind of what I was doing with some of these tabs, is just getting stuff out of here, sewing it to the pages. And I'll show you where I started that. So this journal was a little bit inspired by the fact that, okay, last year, last summer, I think it was August of last year, August of 2020, my daughter comes in my room in here and she shows me a TikTok video of, um, a girl showing her a flip through of her Wreck This Journal. So I don't know how many of you are familiar with the Wreck This Journal. Let me grab my daughter's. I was aware of it because we bought this one for my daughter back when she was in um, middle school. And she worked on it a bit, so I was aware of you know, I, I knew what the journal was, but she worked on it. Actually, I think she and her friends used to do it at lunchtime in middle school in the cafeteria and stuff. Um, Cause there's a lot of stuff in here where she did pages with friends. So I was aware of it um, and you, her address, but it's even got stamps on it because you're supposed to 
um, tape it closed and then ship it, but she had taped it closed with, with washi tape and I didn't think it would make it back home. So I need to do it differently. But anyway, so that was when I knew about Wreck This Journal. I also, she got this one, a little one, and it's a little bit different, but I don't think she did. One of the first prompts, which is to number the pages. I noticed, okay. But she didn't do much else in here. And then I, she showed me a flip through. And I think the girl's name is Kara Papa. Uh, but she showed me a flip through that she did, that this girl did of her journal on TikTok. And I don't have TikTok, so she came in here, she showed it to me. I literally had her replay this video. I mean, we watched it, I probably watched it 10 times. And I was like, oh my, I am just enamored with that journal because it was so fat that it wouldn't close. And it was just so full of stuff that I was just like, oh my goodness, I need one of those. So I went online on Amazon. I ordered this, wreck this journal that comes in color now. So, and even a lot of the prompts and things are about using color. And I was like, oh, that's totally the one for me. It comes in color. And while I was there on Amazon, I also ordered the regular one for myself, but to make it, to give it, make it fun, I ordered it in French. So if I finish this one, then my plan is to, um, to do this one in French. And this is the, the regular older one. So I started it, I think, July or August um, of 2020. Let me see what my first, yeah, this is August. Um, I can do a, a flip through of where I'm up to in this journal. My thought originally was I thought, I never considered one of these because I thought that's for kids. That's not for grown-ups. But now that I've gotten this part in it, and this is what I've been working in instead of my busy hands journal. Um, now that I've gotten this far in it, <clears throat> it's been a really cool experience for a journaler, for a junk journaler. Because if you ever wondered like what think, oh, what can I put in my junk journal? This will broaden your mind like nothing you've ever imagined. Because this is basically, you can glue whatever you want <laughs> in your journal. Um, so my idea with this was I wanted it to be super bulky, you know, that, that to display it, it could like actually display, you know, kind of like that. It's just so full of stuff. Um, and it really is kind of uh, what I've been doing instead of working in um, one of these, which I have three of these that are full, that are, I've just called my busy hands journals. And it's kind of a, you know, version of that. Anyway, I'm rambling. This is going to be the longest video ever with no content. Okay, so when I was going through this book, and putting things in it. This this one is cover this page using only office supplies. So as I was going through this book, I thought I, I had trouble finding pages. So this is the this page is actually a page in the book. Color this page red on purpose. So I colored the page red, you know, with markers and paint. And then I started putting red stuff on it. And I even did the back of it. But I was like, where's the Where's the red page? So I put a tab. Well, that led to tabs, and I decided to add um, pages for all the colors. So here's a page I did green, and I put a green tab. And then I started hanging these dangly things off of the tabs. I put an eyelet and then put these uh, silly charms and beads and these were the first two I put on. This is, I guess, how the charm thing happened. The first two pages that I did that I put tabs on were the this red one and this blue one. And then sitting here on my desk, because I'd just gotten back, we anyway, my dog got a new rabies collar. And um, 
these were in a bowl on my, because I, I don't throw anything away. So I stuck those on there and that's how the charm thing kind of got started. So there's my yellow page. And after that, I just started putting tabs on everything out of necessity because once I got this going, I can't, I couldn't find any of the pages. So there's my blue green page. I did a purple page. There's the green page. There's a black, black page. So there's all these directions on these pages of things to do. And then there's also some instructions in the back of the book to find way, other ways to wreck this journal. One thing I'll say about this is that these books have some die-hard fans. And I looked at very few um, videos online of people doing these. And most of them are kids. But I looked at a few. And people in the comments can be very nasty. Like if you don't follow the instructions for this book exactly. you know. And it even says in here, the idea of this book is to completely destroy it. Um, and there's all kinds of activities. But I'm like, you know what? I paid for this journal and I can do whatever I want to. I don't have to follow, I don't even have to follow one single direction in the book if I don't want to. It's my book. So that's part of why I hadn't shared any of it because I wasn't following the directions exactly. And I don't want people to, I don't want any hate. So if you don't like my journal, just move on. It's fine. Wreck This Journal, The Revolution Now in Color by Carrie Smith. And then I added and Melanie Sullivan here and to the title page because it is now by Carrie Smith and Melanie Sullivan. So it has you write your name different ways. Um, cut out a small piece of, of wreck, the, wreck This to always keep with you. So I cut that out of the cover and I put it in my wallet, still in there. Um, cut two holes here for peeking at people. So the idea is you hold the book up like you're reading it but you're looking through these two holes. And when I cut the holes out, I realized it cut off um, the title. It cut the W and the, it cut up the title. So what I did was I cut those letters out and then I just used packing tape to tape them back in place. So now I have like lenses and you can still read the title. I put some hot fix jewels on the front and I started kind of going in order because there are some things in here that, um, and you don't have to go in order, but there are some things in here that, you know, the first instruction is to add your own page numbers starting here. So the first thing I did was go through and added page numbers to the whole, to every page in the whole journal. Um, and then for page numbers, I also went through some of my number stickers. My mom had given me these giant stickers and these mailbox stickers, so I just added a bunch of those. Um, the next one is to crack the spine. So that was the second thing I did, which is just you open it up and, you know, crack it. Um, and then I just made a, I just cut out a paper, a check mark, and put that on there. And I just continued my page numbers over to this one. Because remember, my idea was I wanted this thing to be so full that it just, you know, stands up on its own, that it's huge. So there are definitely some pages in here that if I want to do what it says, I should have done it a long time ago, um, such as climb up to a high place and drop the journal. You know, I now I wish I had done that earlier on because now I'm pretty attached to it and I don't want... I don't want it to get messed up. <laughs> I don't want the spine to break in half or I don't want, you know, st pages to rip out. Um, but you know, it's my, it's my journal, so it's my prerogative. If I decide not to do that, then um, that's fine. You know, it's fine with me, doesn't matter. But there are definitely some things in here that you should probably, if you're going to follow the directions exactly, there's definitely some things in here that you should probably do first. So anyway, this is what I've been working on, and this is where I kind of got into sewing all these different tabs. Like I put this lady on here, so I was just using, finding all different kinds of things other than just regular tabs that I could put in here as a tab. 
um, because I just, my idea, like I said, I think it's 15th time I've said it now, is to just bulk this up. So when I made this journal, I thought, you know what? I love the way this looks with all the stuff on it. Oops. So I started sewing tabs to every one of these pages. So that's what I've done in this journal. And it bulked it up a whole lot. I mean, it's already got, you know, like a alligator mouth or whatever. But then I thought, you know what I can do? This can be my next Wreck This Journal slash Busy Hands. And I can do it kind of using some things that I learned from doing this journal, like of putting things in, like where's my tea bag, my tea tags, like here's my tea tag. So every time I drink a cup of tea, I staple the um, tea bag tab tag on there. So that's, you know, stuff that I could put, do pages of that in here. Um, here's a page that was cut strips and do a weaving. So I actually, cut the strips out of the bottom half of the piece of paper and then cut slits in the top half of the paper and then folded them up and wove them through um, and then glued them down to do my weaving. So this, they're actually still attached here. Um, but there are a lot of things in here that I thought, you know, I could still do that in something like this. So now I think my plan for this journal, rather than just being just an art journal, is it's going to be a busy hands slash art slash wreck this journal. Um, and from the wreck this journal standpoint, I mean, I'm going to put bulky stuff in here. So it's already with all these tabs, you already can't write in it very well. I mean, you could use a writing board definitely and to have a flat surface, but for the most part, these pages are, are pretty lumpy bumpy. Um, I made this journal with a soft spine, doing that thing I came up with where I punch holes in the, in the two covers um, using my cinch, and then I sewed a spine, a canvas. I layered up a piece of canvas and a piece of ultra suede, sewed those to the to the spine with a a, a a chain chain stitch bind a chain stitch here, and then I made the signatures, sewed them in, and then um, I covered the chain stitch for the spine on the inside with end paper, the end papers, like that, and then I covered the spine itself. Uh, which I didn't like. It was a cut-off piece of a um, canvas that I had painted, and it was just a, a strip, so it was kind of the edge. So then I just glued this uh, Fabri-Tac, this sorry trim onto it. So one cool thing of the many cool things, because I'm telling you, this way I figured out to do a soft spine is one of my favorite things I've done in, in junk journaling or... Um, one cool thing is when you're working on something, like if you're working here in the front of the book and it's uneven, all you have to do is go back, you know, find a and you can flip the book around because the spine, you can fold it back on itself. So you can always make it flat. You know, you want to work on the back page in here and that's too low, just flip some of those pages around. So that way it's relatively flat. You could use a writing board if you needed to, but I'm not going to do any writing per se in here. I'm just going to do collage, which is what this is, collage, scrap collage, um, this, I started another scrap collage, this, I was watching a Wendy Brightbill class and she was embroidering on, doing embroidery on um, tissue paper. And this is some tissue paper that was in the package that Legia sent me. I love this gold tissue paper. Thank you, Legia. Um, so I put four pieces of that together and then I stamped a peony on it. And then I was not, you can't, the thing about it is it's tissue paper. So you can't stitch too close together. So I'm not necessarily thrilled about how this looks, but I like it anyway. And then I just put some, glued some other stuff on. These, some of these pages I glued on some craft paper because I had all this craft paper already cut to put in the signatures, these pieces that I got out of some packaging. And then after I had the signatures sewn in, I realized, 
oh, they're still sitting there. And I hadn't put the craft paper in. So I just went through, I cut them in half and then just went through and um, glued the craft paper onto uh, some pages. And then here's a page that I painted with gouache and used acrylic paint markers. And then I painted some black, um, I put some, here's a piece of black paper that I doodled on with a uh, jelly roll. And then I think there's a page in here that I plain, painted black. I don't know if it was either, maybe that's a different book. I, paint, I, I thought I did. I painted it black with gesso and then I had started doodling some flowers on that too. So anyway, this is what I was working in this morning. And how long am I, how long is this video? 23 minutes. And I haven't, 23 minutes of total rambling. But I thought I'd do a couple of pages. So this is going to be art journal slash busy hands journal slash um, wreck this journal slash slash. Oh, actually, I'm going to work in the wreck this journal, though, because I had an idea for that one. And I have a bunch of pages in here that I need to finish till it's full. So I went through recently and I made a list of all the activity pages and things that I still need to do. So I taped that list in here and then I went through and put post-it notes on all the pages that are either still blank or I still need to do something to them. There's still a blank space. So I'm going to do one where I sew a bunch of fabric scraps to a page. And I think I marked the page that I wanted to use before the video, but now I can't find it. It's the one where it says to give away the fa your favorite page in the journal. And I found a sticker that says, no way, I'm not, giving, I'm not tearing out and giving away my favorite page. found it. It's this one. So this one says give away your favorite page and I found a sticker that says not going to happen. So I just stuck that on there. So technically this page is finished because the idea was to tear it out. I didn't tear it out. So on this side of the page I'm going to sew a bunch of tiny fabric scraps by hand onto this page on the opposite side of this weaving page. And then this page is going to have stitches running all through it but it won't matter because I'm not tearing it out or anything. So, let me see if I, I've been, I don't know how this book is made. It's a perfect binding, which is a glued spot. But the, the pages are glued in, but I don't know how the pages have not already fallen out of this book. And it's funny because the few that I did watch um, videos of, nobody's was falling apart. It's really weird. Even though some of the activities in the book say to do things like swing the journal around and, and let it hit the walls, you know. So I'm just going to stitch some swatches to this and then I'll add it. I made an index. Where'd my index go? Now that the book's, my book's flipped around. Here's my index. So I made an index and I created this little, I should have left it blank. I created this little spreadsheet tablet or spreadsheet form page so I could fill in by alphabet. So I just guessed how many A pages I might end up with and C's. I'm totally off. I mean, you could have used this much space for S's and T's. And anyway, that's there and then this is so once I do this page actually I can just do it now let's see so fabric swatches to a page and that's going to be page number 146 and my index is here where the scissors are so I'm going to put that there page 146. Okay. 
And my daughter's texting me now, so this isn't going to be blank anymore. Um, so here's what I was going to do. I just got this. I picked out some tiny little scraps. Do I want to do the inside first? I think I'm going to start on the inside. On the inside edge. So I got an email about the 100 day project and shortly before that I had seen Rachel at Roxy Creations was talking about the 100 day project and apparently I've never done it but apparently it starts even earlier this year. I think it usually must start like in April and for some reason they're starting it July, uh, July, January 31st. So. I was kind of thinking about doing it, and I will say, although there's no way I can make this happen, I did think about doing um, a 100-day project where I made a video a day, but I pretty quickly nixed that idea because I don't think I could stick with it. I don't... I, I, I think I'd be setting myself up for failure, so... I was thinking about doing it. I don't know that I could do something that required me to make a video every day. So I was almost thinking if I do something, I could do, I could post everything on Instagram, whatever my 100 day projects are, post those on Instagram. And then I could do like a weekly video that's a roundup sort of, of what I did for that week. Um, to work for my 100 day project. So then you have to think of something you wanna do for this 100 day project. And one of the things I thought of um, was doing um, an index card a day, an ICAD thing. And that's from, there's a, an artist and journaler, um, oh, now I can't remember her real name, but her, studio name is um, Daisy Yellow and she does an index card a day challenge. So I looked that up because I thought oh I could do that but she actually does that challenge every year in the summer. So I was like well I don't want it if I decided to do the index card a day I don't want it to overlap um, since they're kind of two different things. So I sort of nixed that one, that idea. And then, you know, I was thinking about a flower drawing a day, a sketch a day, and there's so many things. Stitching a day, I don't, I just, if I try it, I don't want to set myself up to have something that's so much um, effort that I just don't do, you know, I stop before it's over. The other thing would be, I would want something that doesn't require me to, because I have a limited amount, I have a lot of stuff, but I have a limited amount of actual physical work surface. Like this table that I'm on right now, besides my desk where my other computer is, this table that I have is the only work surface really that I have in this room. So if I start working on something, that I have to get things out and then I don't want to put them back up, then my work surface is, is you know, is um, full of stuff. So I don't want to do something that I have to say, you know, clean it up in order to um, work on my regular, my regular stuff. 
So I am just willy-nilly stitching all over this. So I would want it to also be something that I could clean up easily or something that's kind of self-contained, you know, something I could keep it, keep it all in one box and I could do it in this, the art room, craft room, or I could do it in the sewing room, or I could do it in front of the TV, you know, something like that. I really like that index card thing. I got my index cards out, which I don't see them now. I had them on the desk earlier. Where did I put them? Well, I don't, I don't see them. But I like that index card a day thing. They're small. I did whatever. Um, what's that? Let me find. I just, I literally just had them here. Where did I put them? Here they are. So here's my. I did this in 2018. These are some um, index cards. That one's a collage, that one's a watercolor, there's a doodle. I mean, they're just a variety of whatever. Um, another collage, just doodling and, okay, so there's those. These were 2018. Most of these were all April 2018. Some of them were November 2019, which is weird how I do things and then I go back to it year, you know, a couple years later. This one is one I turned into a So these were all index cards that I did the iCAD thing, but then I glued them together into a book like this, see? And I think this idea came from um, a Faith, what is her last name? I don't remember. Her, her first name is Faith. Um, she's a book artist. Oh, what is her name? I'll find it and, and put it in the description, hopefully. Um, but this idea to fold the index cards and how to glue them together to make this little book structure, um, that came from her little class on Craftsy, I think. Craftsy? Wait, no. Creative Bug. And then, those are zines. I used to do zines a lot, too. And then these are some... I tried doing bigger ones. And I was going to make these also into... Um, yeah, this one's March 2018. Um, I was going to make these larger ones, do, the, do them bigger like this, and then do the larger ones and glue them into a book. But I guess I liked doing the smaller ones better. I have those. There's those and some zine. A, a zine. So I was thinking about that index card. Oh, and the whole reason I got this out was so I could see how big it is. This is a five. So this is a three by five index card. I guess those others are, the big ones are five by eight, I think. Okay, I'm not attaching anything else. I guess I could. This video is probably long enough, but y'all let me know if you want me to do a flip, to a complete flip through of my Wreck This Journal. Um, I could do it. It could, you know, be kind of a grown-up's take on on Wreck This Journal because most of the things that I did look at online were younger people who did it. And there's some directions, some instructions and things in here if you follow it exactly that they're a little childish to me and I didn't want to do them like um, you know draw a picture of 
someone burping or, you know, I mean, just that's not one of them, I don't think, but there's things kind of like that, but I'm just like, eh, I'm going to pass on that. But like I said, if someone wanted to get into junk journaling and they didn't know where to start, tackling a book like this would be really cool because, oh, I should, oh, I think I will. I'm going to, I'm going to take this out, say back to like right here, and then I can tie those two together. So I'll stitch down and go through those holes on this side. So there's what the other side of my page looks like now. I'm going to stitch back up through the holes that I left where I took the red out. Go back up through here and let's see. And then I can tie these off because I didn't actually tie that red off. I just tied a little um I just tied a little knot in the end of the thread, but this way I can actually knot and tie it off. So I'm not sure how, I don't know how many pages I have left in here. I could count because I have that list now. Um, pages that I have to actually do something. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So according to that list, I have sixteen pages where I need to still do something. Oh, I already lost that page I just did. There it is. So I need to do something on this page to make a tab so I can find that fabric page. And I guess I have a big fabric ruffle here for no reason, but I guess I could put a fabric tab there to indicate that's my fabric page, like that, or how about like that? That's cute. I can just attach this. It's kind of big. I don't want to glue it over my... I'll have to go like that. Or I can cut it down, which is what I think I'm going to do. I'm going to cut it down and then glue it. So these tabs that I did, I think I cut all these tabs with my... What is that cutter called? The one you hook up to the computer. I am I'm having trouble with my words. Um, it's not a silhouette. It's a cricket. Okay, so that now I can remember if I want to find my fabric page. This is where it is. And I could even write on here fabrics or fabric scraps like that okay I think we're at like an hour almost uh, 49 minutes um, let me know if you want to see a flip through of this journal and I'll see what I I'll, I'll do a separate video for that this one's long enough but um, that's what I'm up to today and uh, I will I hope you're doing well I hope you're safe and healthy and I appreciate all the sweet comments I've been getting lately. I've gotten some really kind comments that just warm my heart um, when I hear that <laughs> you love putting my videos on to watch, you know, while you're in your craft room. And it just, it, it's really heartwarming. And it, it does, even though I don't answer them as quickly as I should, um, I read and appreciate every single one. Um, so thank you for the comments and and I've seen a lot of new new subscribers um, on my leaving comments so 
I appreciate that too. Anyway, I'm gonna go since I'm hopefully I'm finished rambling. Um, Y'all have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.